Welcome back to the Morning Plan. I have a 14-year-old daughter who's about to turn 15, so it won't be long, and she'll be asking for the keys. But before she gets behind the wheel, I want to know what I should do to prepare her and me. So Ann Scallon is here with a group called Before the Wheel, and she is here with tips about teaching kids about the privileges as well as the responsibilities of driving. Great to see you again, nice Ann. Nice to see you. It, it truly is a privilege, um, but it's also a responsibility, a huge right. responsibility, I right. feel like. Exactly. I think it's good for the, the parent to, you know, sit down with the teen early. Like you said, you have a 14-year-old. And um, they're going to be exposed to situations where a parent, you know, maybe they're getting a ride home with a friend. The parent can't come. And maybe the teen brother or sister comes to pick up. And, you know, one of the things you might want to do is introduce conversations where they talk about when they feel uncomfortable with what a driver's doing. That and helps, what to do. Right, and that helps open the doors uh, for them to start expressing how they feel because speaking up, as you know, is very difficult. Yeah, and I think sometimes the key as parents is not just to say, here's what you do, but to give them the language to use, to give them words to use, like, oh, if, if they don't know what they would say, to help right. them come up with something so that they kind of have that, that plan in their heads. Let's talk about general behaviors that uh, you feel a teenager should be displaying that show that they have both the maturity and the readiness to enter the first drive, uh, the first stage rather of driving instruction, which is that first class setting right it's right. like three weeks it's a three so week classroom. how do you know if they're they're ready and mature enough for that well what you want to look at is are they taking things seriously in the car they're a passenger right now mm -hmm. in your car or in carpools or you know friends family and are they putting on their seatbelt I'm glad you brought that up because this is how this topic came up. I said, my 14-year-old, I hate to rat her out. She's at school, thankfully. No, I'm kidding. But she was reluctant or slow sometimes to put on her seatbelt in the passenger seat. And I was like, that's not going to fly. That's not going to work. And I told you about it. How do you encourage it? And you said, well, one way you can encourage it is by saying, if you don't do it, as soon as you get in the car as a passenger, you're not ready to be a driver. So you delay that, the, the start of instruction. Right, exactly. And so you, you have that that conversation with your child and say what do we need to look at here you know are you really ready for that because seat belts are the biggest things the teens will put it every single time they'll put it on in the car with the parents and then they get together with friends and they don't do it we're fortunate in Wisconsin we have you know Donald Driver right now is doing a seat mm -hmm. belt campaign seat belts are crucial they they save lives you can get into a pretty bad accident and survive if you're wearing a seat belt and vice versa you can get into a fender bender or a fairly mild accident but be seriously hurt right exactly so you want your teen to be thinking about those things you want them to be thinking about um, you know, are they still doing some of that roughhousing in the back that kids sometimes do in the car? Again, you want to say, you know, let's just sit down and talk about this because when you're a driver, you're not going to want your passengers to be doing that. So mm -hmm. are they starting to respect what needs to be done in driving, which is 100% attentive behavior. Yeah, I like that. Here's another good question. Specific activities that we as parents should be doing to prepare our young teenager to be aware of and understand road situations, signs, for example, traffic signals, traffic flow. Are there things we should be doing now before they get to that, that point of instruction or actually practicing behind the wheel? Well, it's summertime, and one of the things I recommend most is, is um, encouraging your teen or going with your teen bicycle riding. Oh. I call bicycle riding the best form of defensive driving. Hmm. You don't have that steel armor on to protect you. When you're on your bike, let's say you're in, your teen's in the subdivision, they have to cross a busy road to get out to go somewhere else. You're looking in every direction. You're watching all the traffic flow. So they're starting to see what does 35 miles per hour look like? Mm -hmm. What does it look like when somebody's not doing that, when they're going slower or too fast? They're going to respond much more cautiously because they're on their bike and they know if something happens, it's, it's not going to be good. Yeah. So uh, bicycle riding, they get a lot of insight into uh, stopping, going, how traffic flows, uh, when you can pull out, when you can't pull out, that type of thing. I think that's a great tip. Should parents be talking frequently to teenagers, do you feel like, in advance of those classes? Because I think a lot of times teens are in the car and they're on their phones. They're not really paying attention to what's going on as, they're drive as a parent is driving. 
Right, and that's another thing you can do is kind of have a few days every month where just call them gadget-free days. Uh, when, they're, when they take driver's ed, there is actually, I, I think it's six hours of observation. Observation is very important, so one of the things you can do is have them stop utilizing the gadgets for a few times and start getting, you know, that, that scanning of what's going on. One of the big things is what other drivers are doing. Mm -hmm. I think your teen's going to be very surprised to see how many people are texting and talking on the phone. And, and not paying attention to And them. not paying yeah. attention. So you, I often say, said to my children, you're probably one of the best, more focused drivers out there, and that's true. So they can realize that they have to make up, that driver that is talking on the phone is impaired, and so they have to make up for that. You don't want to overly be bringing up too much driving when they're 14, because they're really not getting the practice, but you want to help them to see that there are certain behaviors that prepares them. And as, as certainly as they get close to 15, you have a great resource online, great newsletter as well. You can go to um, beforethewheel.com. They're supporting safe teen driving. You can find out more about all the resources they have available. Again, it's beforethewheel.com. Thank you so much, Ann. And now we're